Today, I'm going to show you the easiest way to tie a survival bracelet. Hey everybody, welcome to this basics tutorial here on Stone Age Man. We're going to talk about how to create one of these. Now, I know on YouTube there are tons of different tutorials that talk about how to make variations of these and how to do it from simple to advanced. Um, and I'm wearing a lot of them. I have a lot of practice doing this. So I wanted today to talk about the basics. Why would you even bring one of these into the field? And then I want to show you how I create what I think is the simplest and maybe most effective version of a survival bracelet. Okay, let's get started. First, supplies. Start with about 10 feet of paracord. Paracord is great because you have an outer sheath and inside seven braided nylon strands. If you get 550 paracord, all of that combined together gives you a breaking strength of 550 pounds, which is extremely strong. Get yourself some scissors, a lighter, it doesn't have to be a fancy one like this, a standard one for your fireplace works just fine. And even if it's not necessary, a flat tool like this where you can squish down on the end of the melted paracord will work nicely at the end. And finally, I recommend having a buckle like this. Now let's talk about how long this is gonna take. I've been doing this for years now and it only takes me five to 10 minutes to do each bracelet. And I like to do some fancy things every now and then. I created a video about this a few years back and people were like, why do you even want a survival bracelet? What's the survival aspect of it? Well, truth be told, if you're in a survival situation, it's really useful to have some cordage. I showed in another video how to create your own cordage. Truth is, natural fibers take a long time to make and they're not as strong as some of these synthetics like paracord. Oh. Oh, snap. Oh, it didn't quite hold my body weight, but very close. They're really handy if you're using a bow drill to create your own fire. Cordage is handy when setting up a shelter. You could even go fishing with some of the twine. In fact, here's a variation of paracord called the survival cord. Inside are those seven braided nylon strands. It also has a metal strand, a monofilament line, both used for fishing if you wanted it to, and some jute. Jude is really good for fire starting. You can light it and it acts a little bit like a wick. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. The technique for this survival bracelet is with a knot known as either the Cobra Stitch, the Solomon Bar, or the Portuguese Sinnet. I think it's the easiest and quickest one to tie and it also looks pretty good. Obviously, there are other knots you can use, like the Snake Knot, which is another common one. You can also use many colors or a single color, or you can get incredibly fancy. You can even create one without a buckle like this. It's a little more difficult to tie, so I'm gonna show you the most basic version, which in my estimation is when you use a buckle. At this point, you need to go find yourself some paracord. I have my eight to 10 feet of paracord right here. I also have a buckle, and I'm going to switch into a little bit more of a, a live presentation. I'm gonna put it up here on the overhead and hopefully walk through this at a pace that you can follow along. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is find the middle of the paracord and you can do that by taking both ends together and then working your way to the middle. Once you have that, get your buckle and we're gonna dive the paracord through. Okay, a lot of these will have a curve like this to them. So you wanna start by pushing one end through here. There we go. So once you've pushed through a little loop, you actually take that loop and put it through the loose remaining cord. And then you just pull it tight. Okay, so this is gonna create one end of our paracord and we're going to start tying down to it. Take the other end and dive it through. So now I have to adjust it to the size of my wrist. So one of the things that you can do is just put it on and then you can pull these cords down. You wanna make sure you don't make it too tight. So that's about what would be tight for me. I wanna be able to get a couple fingers under it, just like that which actually adds about an inch to it. So if you're measuring, measure your wrist and then add an inch. I'm gonna take off the buckle. And then at this stage, I'm gonna tie the very first cobra knot. I'm gonna take the right end, I'm gonna loop it over the front, and then I'm gonna take this one, loop it over and under all of them and up and through. Okay. And now I just tie that as tight as I can get it. This first one's a little bit tricky. You kind of got to make sure you don't lose your place. Pull that really tight. This is your first knot. Now to do the second knot, you're actually going to take the left end, put that one over in a loop, and then you're going to take this end, the right end, take it over that one, under all of them, and up through 
that hole. Okay, just like that. And then you pull it tight. Now what you'll notice is that it's starting to create a alternating loop. So loop on this side, loop on this side. If you ever lose track of which one goes in front, you look at this little vertical section and see it's on this side right now. Then you use this one and you go in front. So and it's just alternating, but it's a right, loop it over, around. Now that we're at this stage, you can probably tell it's a little bit difficult to see what's happening. So I'm going to switch this out with a couple different colors. We are two knots into this and you can see here, we're confused, where do we start? Vertical, this is the black one right now. It is on the right side, so the right, which is the green cord, will go up and over and then the black one goes over the top of that, under all of them and up through the hole, just like so. And then you pull it tight and we're gonna start catching this other cord in there, which is fine, but I'm just, so you can see. Okay, repeat, on the left, up and over, over that cord, up through the hole, real easy. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way as I tie this. I'm just gonna tie a couple more and then I'll speed up the process. Vertical on this side, so over, down, up, and through. Now what's cool about this is that you'll notice it's starting to create a little bit of a pattern. In this case, the black is creating the sides and then the green is creating the middle. Now using colors like this is beautiful and I like the idea of using colors, although what that does for you is it creates a little bit less cordage when you unravel the whole thing. So it's a it starts to become more for decorative purposes than for actually using the cord. But the reason I'm using it is that at least now you can see the patterning of right to left because you have black and green on either side. Now one of the things I'm not doing is I'm not explaining how to do this coloration pattern. I'm just kind of assuming that all you're trying to do is learn how to do this cobra knot. You can look up tutorials on the internet. There's uh, somebody that I like following called Board Paracord. He does all of these different ones. This is where all the paracord is from. He has a little shop just outside of Atlanta. Um, which, you know, I don't go to his store, but he creates tutorials on how to do all of these different ones. One of the benefits of doing it the way I'm doing here with these different colors is the inner cord here that I have is that survival cord. So it has the metal wire in it, the monofilament line and the jute. Not that you'll, you know, use that all the time, but it's kind of, kind of a nice thing to just know that you have on your wrist at all times. The downside is that your rope is not as strong because you've spliced it in a few different places to get these colors. So one of the things I like about these survival bracelets is it's just an easy way to start working with knots. You know that there's some practical application in the future, should you need it. That means you're prepared. And if you're an adult and you're working with kids, this is something kind of fun to do with them. You know, back in the day, this was something we did in Boy Scouts. Now, if you're starting into this and you want to get some paracord, you can go on Amazon. You can go to your local hardware store and get paracord. One of the things that you, in theory, are looking for is the 550 paracord. 550 paracord is military grade, which means there's those seven strands of nylon. If it doesn't say 550 paracord, then it likely it's more of a crafting type paracord because that, and, and that means there's less nylon strands inside, so it's a little less thick, but it also is sometimes is easier to work with because it's not as thick. Um, but you know, when you're starting out, I suppose it's not that big a deal. You just want to start practicing tying things, but that is one thing that you'll be looking at in the future. As you get into doing stuff in the outdoors, one of the things you'll notice is that paracord is everywhere. People love to use paracord. I, I also like giving them as gifts. Although I don't know if the people getting them quite appreciate it so much, but <laughs> But if you're a kid and you're making them as presents, everyone will like them. I guarantee that. Now, before I get to the end, let me just say, if you have questions about all this, definitely go down to the comments below and ask them. People will answer. It's a great little community we have. Also give this video a, a like, subscribe if you aren't already. We are going through Bushcraft Basics in the next few months. And this is just kind of one piece to that. This is a little bit of a skills video. Okay, now we're getting close to this end. I wanna show you how we're gonna work this. I wanna get this as close to the end as I can. So let's tie one more, up and over, down and through. And I'm gonna, just gonna keep this simple. I'm not gonna show you the advanced ways of hiding the, the knots. <sighs> Great, no, I think that's probably good. Okay, 
Now, the cool thing with paracord is that when you get to the end, you can actually clip off these extra lines, the extra little bit of paracord, and then you can melt them and smoosh them in so that they don't unthread. Okay, so watch watch how we do this. Now, you only want, um, you know, maybe three, four millimeters, and it's you're not going to be measuring that, but it's good to just eyeball it. So, something like that. You don't want too much. That might be actually just a little bit much, but... At least it won't slip through right at the end here. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so you can see right here I've snipped off this end and I'm going to now melt them. This is the best one to use. It's a little bit hotter. But let me just show you with the other one. This is also where this tool comes in handy. I'm going to show you once with it and then once without it. Okay, so here we go. Melting. You're gonna have to just get a feel for how hot you get it, but I like to see it kind of getting hot and melty. Then you take that, flatten it out just like so. Voila, smooth, perfect. Now here's a method without using the flattener. So again, I just kind of keep burning on it until it gets pretty, pretty melty. You don't want to, and then I just use the edge of the thing just like that. See? So you can just use the lighter if you need to. Here is the finished bracelet. Let's see if it fits on my wrist. So there's the finished bracelet right here. And let me just finish this bracelet real quick as well. Two of them side by side. You can see kind of how they look. Doesn't that look cool? It looks pretty cool. You can get the new book I wrote on wildlife and bushcraft survival basics, which talks about knots like this, and you can watch some more of our videos on the same topic. So there you go. Now you, in theory, could create your own survival bracelet. I like to do this occasionally on Stone Age Man. It's just skills work. If you've never done a survival bracelet before, it's fun. It kind of feels like an arts and craft thing, and it's kind of meditative. In fact, my keys, I do this with my keys. I quite enjoy having a little bit of a, a paracord on them and a little carabiner. So there you go. Anyways, stay tuned for more of this stuff coming out on Stone Age Man. Remember to subscribe, hit that like button if you got anything out of it. And um, big thanks to my patrons who are always supporting this stuff. In fact, the reason I'm doing this is for the patrons that I sent paracord to. So thank you everyone. Okay, we'll see you next video.